Hey, what's up, guys? And welcome to episode 5 of Invasion Talk. Haven't really done much post-commentary lately. Uh, been doing a lot more of live Invasion format and stuff like that. Uh, some music videos, as per usual. But I figured I'd bring back some post-commentary. I have a couple things I'd like to talk about uh, briefly in this episode. Uh, I have been working... A little bit on Final Fantasy 6 lately, so if there's anybody out there who might enjoy some Final Fantasy 6 coming back to the channel, then you have something to look forward to. (laughs) I've uh, been messing around with it a little bit lately, so I have a few episodes in the works. Uh, Everything's laid out, I just need to do some post-commentary, and we're all good on that. So we're going to keep that one moving, but it's going to take a little while to finish. Um, anyway, the first thing that I'd really like to talk about is the roll backstab counter that I use. Uh, sometimes it happens pretty quickly and it, it might be hard to pick up on when it's not in slow motion. Uh, but here's uh, an example right here. And I've also had a couple people kind of say, man, uh, this looks cool and all, but I'm not really, sh- I don't really get it. <laughs> well, here's the feint, uh, the feint attack roll from my opponent, and then the turnaround 180 for the backstab. It's just something that I started doing to deal with people that kind of just sit back and wait for you to attack so they can roll BS you all day long. That's what it was all about. It really wasn't much deeper than that originally, uh, but it it has had its uses. Uh, Pretty much anyone looking to get behind you uh, in any way. Now, just because someone rolls behind you that doesn't necessarily mean they're looking for the roll BS, right? I mean, they could just be looking for that tactical advantage. Uh, I mean, I roll behind people sometimes, not even looking for a backstab. You know, I'm just maybe trying to do a turnaround roll attack or something like that. So, but either way, uh, that little that little uh, feint into 180 is pretty nasty. I mean, you don't even have to follow up with the backstab. You can pick out another attack of your choice uh, if, you know, perhaps your opponent is incapable of being backstabbed. You know, maybe they have ironclad on or gowers, something like that. So, uh, obviously jesters. uh, But, anyways, I think that is pretty much all I wanted to say about the roll backstab counter. So, that brings me to my next main point. Thank you, guys. Uh, Really, from the bottom of my heart, everybody who has come out to the channel to check out my content, anybody who's left any positive feedback, all the new people to the channel, guys, I thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, But there's three people that I really, uh, I owe a lot to, honestly. Uh, Three really cool people, uh, Pokeshine, Polygoing, and Uzi. All three of you guys have uh, done your own part to helping my channel and uh, really giving me motivation and inspiration. So you guys are the best, all right? Uh, Then finally, to the 10 or so people who have kind of been subscribed to the channel, uh, coming by every week to view my stuff and perhaps leave feedback every now and then, you guys are the best, all right? I really appreciate you sticking with me uh, for so long, and hopefully I can continue to bring you guys uh, better content with each passing week. So that is my objective. All right, so that's that. Uh, thank you, everybody. And man, you know, I, you know, once again, I'm going in circles. I'm starting, starting to digress here. Uh, So let's go ahead and get back into invasions. I have been doing quite a bit of 2v1s and 3v1s uh, for this episode of Invasion Talk, and some of you might have noticed that I don't really do a whole lot of 2v1, 3v1 stuff in any of my videos. It's not because I lose most of them, which I most assuredly do, just to be perfectly honest. But it's really because they're ugly fights. Uh, 
from where I sit, like from the editor's chair and just watching me struggle like this, I'm just, oh, it's so cringeworthy. Uh, I can barely watch it. But I thought that some of these were pretty interesting. Um, so I hope that you guys enjoy me getting my ass kicked. Because <laughs> that's basically what this is. Gosh, I have a lot of work to do with 2v1s and 3v1s, man. A lot of work ahead of me. But it's time for a build switch, and this is actually my main. This is the first guy that I made for PvP in Dark Souls 2, and I'm kind of proud of him. Uh, I am kind of torn between this character and the one that was just previously on display. Ah, uh, man, this is most assuredly my main, but I really love playing my Scythe of One build. Uh, it's by far the most rewarding character to play. But this guy is pretty damn cool, and I'm starting to put more on the line as I play this guy. Uh, he's sort of a risky character to play, uh, at least with my aggressive playstyle, anyway. But uh, as you can see, I'm trying to go for this sort of flash parry, quick parry technique where I pull out the parry dagger at the very last moment and go for the parry in one seamless motion. That was a pretty damn good example of it uh, just then, and I'm about to do it uh, again in this fight, I believe, but without any slow motion replay. Uh, but it does happen pretty quickly, and uh, it's all about deception for this build, because, I mean, I'm sitting here in power stance, and there it is right there. People have pretty, you know, little clue as to me having a parry dagger just sitting there waiting to be quick swapped to. Um, I normally switch weapons a lot and it's it's possible that people can get a glimpse of that parry dagger because I like to switch to, uh, excuse me switch to the offhand whip uh, quite often. So there is a there is a situation where I can accidentally reveal that parry dagger if I'm not quick enough on that switch. Uh, but if I'm just going in a fight in power stance for the vast majority, then, I mean, they have no way of knowing that that parry dagger is coming. So, it's pretty nice. And, uh, this guy right here was really good. Uh, I didn't notice until after editing that he wasn't even in power stance with these things. He was just using their movesets uh, quite effectively, and he was just a very patient player, and these are the types of players that normally just pick me apart. Uh, you know, fighting duelists uh, I normally just get picked apart, <laughs> to be honest, because I'm super aggressive, and uh, I don't know. I, I go for I go for really risky stuff a lot of times. You know, I just tried to go for a, a quick parry then, and I ended up just getting shredded by that combo. Uh, but this guy was really good. I was uh, I was pretty thrilled after this fight. But I got clipped from one uh, questionable range there, but it happens. Uh, that was an awesome fight, man. Good fight. Uh, but here's an interesting point. I go up for a backstab on this guy, and I really have to keep reminding myself that that is not a good idea, uh, especially when I'm in power stance, uh, manslayer mode. I really should be following up with um, an L1 L1 combo because with Crest of the Rat on and you know 45 decks and all kinds of shit to augment my poison. Uh, the uh, Sanctum Gauntlets. I'm, uh, you know, I'm applying poison after a couple L1s most of the time, unless someone is rocking really high poison resist. Uh, and obviously my Manslayers are poison infused too, so that's what it's all about. Um, but I'm, I think I'm able to actually get a poison kill on this fight? I'm not 100%. But anyway, yeah, backstabbing with the, the poison infused Manslayer, uh, not the best option. I mean, you're hitting for like 300 damage on heavily armored opponents. So, uh, yeah, not the most viable option. This fight, I thought, was pretty good. Uh, but this is just, you know, once again, normally the sort of stuff that I wouldn't show... <laughs> in any of my other PvP videos, just because 
it's just such a it's such a weird fight uh, the way you're you're forced to fight in 2v1 so this really is not a good example of that to be perfectly honest but um a lot of times it's pretty standard it's you know at least one guy if not two in the back spamming magic uh you know if you get clipped by one you're probably going to die because you're just going to get hit by something uh as a follow-up and you know if they're not doing that then they're actually most of the time playing very cautiously and trying to circle behind you the entire time so you're just sort of in this mode where you're like running in circles so they can't get behind you spinning your camera around and trying to make sure that you know you're not about to get backstabbed so it's just kind of it's weird you know i mean it is fun to come out on top and it's even fun to you know survive for so long and uh to you know not get your ass totally handed to you um but this is the last fight, and real quickly, I should have been wailing on this guy right then instead of going for backstabs. I should have been wailing on him with L1s, but anyway, this is the last fight, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Invasion Talk, and I'll see you on the next one.